I'm Mo Rocca, and I'm excited to announce season four of my podcast, Mobituaries. I've got a whole new bunch of stories to share with you about the most fascinating people and things who are no longer with us. From famous figures who died on the very same day to the things I wish would die, like buffets, all that and much more. Listen to Mobituaries with Mo Rocca wherever you get your podcasts. This episode is brought to you by JLL. Get an insider view into the world of commercial real estate with JLL's podcast, Trends and Insights, the Future of Commercial Real Estate. Whether you're curious about making cities more sustainable, the evolution of office space, or AI opportunities, this podcast will help keep you a step ahead. Tune in for candid conversations with business leaders about the biggest trends impacting how we live, work, and play. Subscribe to Trends and Insights now at jll.com slash podcast. Live the Girl Scout motto. Always be prepared. Hey, everybody. I'm Kelly Wilkness here with Anita Joyce, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks. Today, we're talking about how to prepare for unexpected guests. Kind of scary, but <laughs> if you follow all these tips, you're going to be so prepared. It'll be, you'll be nonplussed. You'll be opening the door and people will be having a fabulous time and you'll be having a fabulous time too because you're not going to stress it. Although I did mention to my mother that we were recording this particular episode and she said, oh, I'd say turn the lights off and bolt the door. <laughs> That would be a very short episode. Well, I think she's on to something there. <laughs> I'm, I think a lot of these things are things that you can do to prepare even if you know the person's coming. And some yes. people don't even want guests coming even if they know ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> well, so true. All of these tips today will apply to whether you know it or you don't know it. Uh, but also, I did want to point out, it does seem like it happens less and less. Because I know a long time ago, it seems like it was not unusual for us to have an overnight guest, but I can't think when the last time was. I mean, it's been a while. But you we know, did have that little thing called COVID. Remember well, that? Well, I'm not even, okay, take that off the table because I don't know if that meant you had guests or you didn't have guests spending, because I'm really thinking about spending the night guests. I don't know. Yeah. Did you go a different direction for this? Did you go for any guests or just overnight? Oh, I kind of did a, a smattering. Overnight, okay. for dinner, that sort of thing. Okay. Well, I guess my point is it seems like people don't stay in someone's home as often as they used to. It seems like people are more interested in having their space. They have more money. There's more options for staying in places. It's not just a hotel. Now you could do an Airbnb. And so I don't feel like if this happens as much, but if it does, we do want you to be prepared. We do. And so that's what we're going to lay out for you today, how to be prepared. The simple starter, I guess, is cleaning and decluttering. If you have to do it at the last minute, baskets and bins are your best friends. Of course, closets no one will open except you are also very useful and under beds. But if somebody suddenly says, hey, uh, you know, I'm in LA or I'm in Houston and love to see you or my business trip was extended or I'm here or you want to get together and you, of course you want to extend the invitation whether it's for dinner or overnight but maybe you only have an hour to get it all together so you want to run through the house and just quickly pick up things that are not in place you want to uh, store things away that don't need to be out you may not even have time to pull out the vacuum maybe you just gloss over the horizontal surfaces maybe Maybe you do a little spritzy in the bathroom and that might be the only thing you have time for in the cleaning and decluttering area. Several of the items I have on my list are things that I suggest that you do ahead of time so that if you do have the unexpected guest, it's already there. So my first item would be to have a basket at the ready with a selection of teas, hot drinks, sitting out maybe with a basket, some, some sweeteners with a um, an electric tea kettle uh, for the tea drinkers, and then a carrot there for the coffee drinkers. And if you can put this in the guest room, even better. 
Uh, some people actually have a, a little uh, area near the guest room where they could maybe put it in a hallway or in a in a game room or something. But even if you don't have that, I think it's nice to even put it in the bedroom. But it's nice for people to have their own little space uh, where they can at least get some coffee or tea. Okay, so we're diving right into the guest room. So that's great. I have a lot of tips on that too. You want to add some special touches to this room or the area, even if it's just a sofa. You might not have a guest room, or you might have to dislodge a child <laughs> from their room to create a guest space that's private. Or maybe it is just a sofa in your lower level, or it might even just be the sofa in your living room, particularly if you're living in an apartment or a townhouse or something like that, you might not have that extra space. But if you have some special touches, even if it is just this carved out area, it can feel a lot more special. I love Anita's idea of having this dedicated sort of guest basket for overnight guests or even somebody who's just going to come for a little bit and maybe they just want to freshen up. They might not even necessarily be sleeping over. And yeah, live in the Girl Scout motto. If you have that done in advance, it's so much easier, which is really the the through point of this entire episode is having these things done in advance so you don't have to be running around and being stressed out about somebody showing up. So initially do the clean and declutter if you can, if you have time for that, wipe things down, have these things already done. You're not expecting them, so you don't know when it might happen, so you might as well get on this right away. Set aside a pretty basket and have it in this space or have it in a closet where you can pull it out, as Anita mentioned. Some teas, coffees, maybe even a candle, maybe put in a protein bar. You could have it in a basket or on a tray. I love a water decanter, and I have one that I found. It's really pretty. It's this cut glass little set, so the cup sits right on top of the decanter. And that would be so pretty rather than just a plastic water bottle or even a reusable water bottle, something that elevates it a little bit, which we're all about here. And so I'll link that in the show notes. That can be so pretty. And also like maybe a little guest kit. You could do it in um, one of those little makeup bags. You know, you might just have an extra one around. Obviously, you want to make sure it's clean and new and all of that. But in there, maybe you're putting a a, a toothbrush, a moisturizer, toothpaste, a little face wash. I love the idea of tucking in a lavender spritz for the bedding. So if there is bedding, whether it is the sofa and a pillow or it's a dedicated guest room, they can give themselves a little spritz that just feels really nice and really feels special and that they weren't unexpected. I think that's a great idea. How about a luggage rack in the guest room? The nice thing about a luggage rack is that it can be folded up and then just tucked in a corner somewhere or even in the closet. So it's not taking up space when you do not have guests. When I go to see my mom, there's not any space for me to set anything down in the room. (laughs) So I think this is something to think about. When guests come, they're going to have their stuff and they're going to need to put it somewhere. So think about clearing off. If you have a lot of stuff on the dresser, if you have a lot of stuff on the nightstand, see if you can't clear that stuff off so that people have a place to sit down, their makeup bag, their their purse, uh, you know, a few incidentals on the dresser, on the nightstand, and then some space in the closet to hang things, a couple of empty drawers. Because if there's no place to put things, they're going to feel awkward just throwing everything on the bed. And then that's not conducive to to sleep or anything. So it really is nice to just leave them a little space. Oh, yeah. I just did a guest room over with a client. And the, really the only people that come are her in-laws. But they were they were kind of so uncomfortable. And they let her know that that they said, next time we come, we're going to stay in a hotel. And she's got little kids and the kids like to have their grandparents there when they wake up. So we kind of quickly did the room. We painted it. We changed the carpet. We, they got a new mattress. We did a headboard. And we just thrifted some end tables so they could have some good lighting. And then the only other space in the room was a sort of Mm, you know, regular size chest of drawers, maybe six drawers, but we just cleared it off because that's a place they could put a laptop, 
or put something else that needed to have be set down, but particularly a laptop, you could still stand. It's like acting like a standing desk. And that's really working out well for them. So you don't have to have a separate desk or a lower horizontal surface, even if it's a taller chest or something like that. Don't clutter it up with things. It'll give people an opportunity to maybe put their laptop. Most people are going to be traveling with an iPad or a laptop now. And maybe that's where you put a little card with the Wi-Fi password. Hey, we'll be right back with the rest of the show, but keep listening so we can continue bringing you DTT. Inevitably, with the new year, come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add dose to your wellness regime. Dose is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to DoseDaily.com co slash dtt and use the code dtt that's dose daily dot co dot co slash dtt and use the code dtt britbox just keeps getting better the new archie is amazing And it's not the comics. It's about Cary Grant. Archie is the brand new limited series starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who became Cary Grant. From the award-winning screenwriter of Philomena, Archie tells Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood story. The dramatic grit to glamour transformation that led him to become one of the most famous people in the world. You are going to absolutely love the acting but also the styling, the outfits, the scenery. It's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter, Jennifer Grant, and ex-wife, Diane Cannon. The performances from Jason Isaacs and the rest of the cast are amazing, and it's only available on BritBox. So sign up for BritBox today to stream Archie and other fan favorites from any device. And we have a special limited time offer for our U.S. and Canadian listeners. Get 50% off, yes, that's 50% off, your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But only if you go to BritBox.com and use our promotion code DTT at checkout. You're going to love Archie. So head over right now and get 50% off your first month of BritBox. Use the promotion code DTT at BritBox.com. So I would suggest also having a set of new towels, maybe towels that nobody uses. Uh, Even if you have to grab the show towels, I'm using air quotes, from a different bathroom and fold them up nicely and put them in the guest room. Have the towels there that don't look like they've been through the wash a zillion times. Uh, You know, certainly don't throw in like the old, uh, you know, Buzz Lightyear beach towel or something like that. You want to have something nice and new. It doesn't have to match, but if it can match, that'd be great. I have a new towel story. When we had guests, we had some guests coming to stay with us, some dear friends of ours. I was so excited. I bought these beautiful forest green towels for them to use. They were all fluffy and cool. And I was just so excited about having them over. And they were wonderful guests, adorable people. And they were so careful to try to do everything just so well they had used the shower. And I think they decided, oh, we're going to be, you know, we want to be good guests. And so they decided to wipe out the tub, even like wipe out the water wow. from the tub, which is really going above and beyond. But wow. I would I think, have these people over anytime. <laughs> oh, they, listen, it was the, what happened was not their fault. It was my fault. Uh, because I didn't even think about these green towels. So they wiped out the tub. Well, do you know when I got up there, the tub was green because oh, no. <laughs> the dye from those towels had just, I mean, it came off, of course, uh, got some water in the tub, but it just looked so weird. And I thought, oh no, I uh, should have washed those towels first 
just to get that dye off. And oh, can you imagine yeah, 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 yeah. here they're trying to be nice and <laughs> it's a green That's ring. So funny. Although they must have been green too, though. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Maybe that's why they left in a hurry. <laughs> But anyway, I want to also go back to what you said about the mattress, because this really is something that happens a lot is we get a new mattress and we have an extra one and people say, well, let's just put it in the guest room because either we don't have a mattress in there yet, or maybe that one's even older. Who knows? But I do remember staying with my in-laws back in the day when we were newly married. And I remember... We both just ended up in the center in this big hole. There was like a big sinkhole <laughs> in the center of the mattress. And we just could not dig ourselves out of the hole. Well, if you don't want the people to stay long or ever to come back, have a mattress like that. It'll work out. You can <laughs> yeah, have your guest kit and your little basket and your fresh towels, but they won't come back anyway. So just think about things that you can do in this particular space or room to make f- people feel good. And if it's a tray or a basket, you can bring it out into the living room if that's where they're sleeping you know just make sure obviously that they have their privacy you don't want your dog jumping on them in the middle of the night or your kids or something like that how about some classic books maybe particularly if it's an unexpected situation people might not have things with them to read so maybe there's a couple of new classics in there nice crisp spines or updated magazines you don't want to make it feel like the dentist's office with some old people magazine something fresh something current uh, to have in there would be really nice too I think that a little sprig from your garden or a little flower or something like that really goes a long way. A little tiny bud vase on the nightstand or on the dresser or even if it has to be in the bathroom or if it has to be in the living room, something in there that says, welcome and we're happy that you're here. Down pillows and foam pillows so people can choose because it really is a case where a lot of people prefer down and a lot of people prefer foam and they don't seem to go back and forth. So it's nice to have some options there. So now what if the person wants to eat while they're there or you want to serve them something and it is a last minute situation? I love to have a bolognese sauce in a container, in the freezer, pretty much at all times. You'll have it prepped in advance. All you need to do is thaw it out. You can even thaw it in your microwave if you have one. And it's hearty. You've got some protein in there. And most people are not going to turn their nose up at a yummy bolognese sauce. Now, if you've got some gluten-free people, maybe you have some gluten-free pasta hanging around too. (laughs) That will really save you in the food department. Right. How about putting a chair in the room if you don't already have one in there? It's really nice to be able to have a place to sit down, put on your shoes, look at your phone. Uh, It's just nice to have some place to sit where you're not sitting on the bed. Uh, So I think it's very nice to have a chair in the room. And, you know, some other things to think about are having a charger sitting out. Uh, I mean, that's super nice. Uh, Certainly maybe some cords here or there, but those chargers sure are nice to have uh, because everybody's got some device to charge. Oh, yeah, that's a great thing to have. Everybody's always looking for a charger. And just make it easy for the person. I like the idea of having a chair in the room because maybe they want to have a little downtime too. You know, being a host can be stressful, can be a lot, but being a guest too, you know, you're sort of like a little baby on tiptoes, you're in somebody else's house, you want to make this person feel like they've got their own space. And if they don't want to come out for a little while, and they want to chill out in there, they don't have to be laying on the bed or sitting on the bed. A chair is a great idea. And certainly if there's not a closet in the room, or there's the closet is used for some other type of storage, at least that's a place where they can lay their clothes over it. So yeah, if you can tuck a chair in there, all the better. So anyway, I jumped into the kitchen. And so I let's go back in there and talk about the pantry. Now, maybe somebody's coming over and it's not a sleepover guest. So these apply, obviously, if the person's just coming over, a neighbor popping over. So have your pantry stock. This is great for you, your family, guests aside, just to have a well-stocked pantry. And everybody's seen these lovely grazing boards or, you know, it's just a glorified sort of cheese board, something you could put together easily, not something that you're making hors d'oeuvres or appetizers or trying to put something together because you don't want to be in the kitchen doing all this busy work when your guests are you know, sitting in the living room waiting for you to come out. 
you open the pantry and you're just pulling out these pretty jars and um, boxes of things and then you just do this spread. You don't even need cheese because cheese can, is perishable and maybe you're not ready for cheese because you didn't know these people were showing up. <laughs> so you nuts, seeds, olives, pickles, Chocolate can even go on one of these boards, a specialty jam or something to go on some crackers that you might have. An unopened box of crackers can probably last a long time. Stonewall Kitchen, if you're not familiar with that particular brand, is so great for their specialty jams and chutneys. Our absolute favorite in our house is the roasted garlic onion jam. It tastes great on everything from a baguette to sometimes I'll throw a dollop of it in a soup that I'm making, but on a board like this or on a platter, that is just such an interesting thing to put out. People may have never tried it before. And of course, if you've got some fresh fruit just on the counter, you could put that on your board. And it does you don't have to have a million different choices on this little platter or board. Just a few things that say welcome, easy to put together. Maybe you've got some little bowls that you can pour some of the nuts in or something like that and just make it look real pretty. Maybe add a sprig of something from the garden, a little greenery, and voila, you are the hostess with the most. I had a next door neighbor, Barbara, and she would pop over. Uh, Barbara, have you heard of texting? (laughs) (laughs) She lived next door. And she would pop over, and this was, you know, this was a long time ago. Uh, She was my popover guest. For the first time, I was like, oh, well, hi, come on in. Well, then I realized this was kind of her thing, and I was prepared for her the next time. And I was always enjoyed her. I always enjoyed her coming over. She was such a delight, such a fun neighbor. And it 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 was a fun surprise when she would show up on my door. But I started having a few things on hand. So I was prepared for Barbara. And one of my favorite things to have that I would serve, actually, I did this a lot for people just popping in, is I would keep raisin bread in the freezer. But, you know, not old raisin bread, fairly fresh raisin bread. <laughs> I mean, you know, you don't want like six month old. Old raisin bread. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah, but raisin bread. And I would put um, cinnamon, extra cinnamon, sugar, and a lot of butter on it, pop it in the oven, and then serve that with a fresh pot of tea. And people, either they really loved it or they just pretended with me because it always seemed to be such a hit. Oh, I would come back for that. I love raisin bread. I know. I mean, but it was so simple. But there's so many things like that, like pound cake. Get that out and just put yeah. a simple sauce on it. Maybe a beautiful jam with a little, uh, yeah. you know, thin it out a little bit, put a little whipped cream on it. I mean, that's a delightful dessert. There's so many things you can keep in your freezer and pull out for guests. I think that's a great thing to do. I wouldn't have thought of the raisin bread. The pound cake, yes, but the raisin bread. Oh, I like that one. I do love raisin bread with tea. That's a really nice touch. Hey, let's go back into the the linens and the linen closet. Anita, remember when we had bespoke decor and we had those beautiful yes. linen bags? Yes. Oh, I, well, I just was using mine. I don't know why I never ordered those and used my employee discount. I don't have those. Oh, no. I know. Oh, I have like four of them. Anita, explain to everyone what they were in case they missed that. So they were bags, your extra set of linens, sheets that are not on your bed. You would put your flat sheet, your fitted sheet, and two pillowcases in this bag. And then you have these beautiful bags that all match and pull string at the top. And it's just such a neat way to stack them in your linen closet or in a drawer. And it keeps everything together and it looks so neat and tidy. And I mean, Beautiful. I love these bags. And we monogrammed them too, didn't we? Yes, minor monogram. Really beautiful. Darn, I didn't get those. So I did find some that certainly were not as beautiful as ours, but 100% cotton and they have big chunky wooden buttons. They're really good looking, but nothing like the bespoke decor ones. So if anybody has those out there, you are lucky ducks that you grab those. But what a great thing, even if you didn't do all your linens for the various beds uh, in your home, but if you just had a dedicated set 
for the guest. Whether the guest is going to be on a sofa or the guest is going to be in a dedicated guest room, and you obviously will know the size of the bed, you then have the set in this bag. You know it's for the guest. You're not rifling through the linen closet and holding them up. Is this the queen? You know, is this, <laughs> and is this the right. fitted that goes with that one? Oh, yeah. You've got really nice sheets already folded. Maybe you've spritzed them with some of that lavender spray. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Go ahead, clean out your closet, then head straight to Quince. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor, and I can really recommend their Ultra Stretch Super Wide Leg Pant at $49.90. The price is unbeatable, and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365 day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. It's all about taking the stress out of having guests, whether expected or not, and allowing you to enjoy the experience. If you are running around your house thinking, now I have to bake a raisin bread or, or like, <laughs> or now I have no sheets. Oh, I have to do a load of laundry. Oh my gosh, what is our Wi-Fi password? You're not going to have any fun. No. And lots of times this might be around the holidays when people show up or they extend their stay. And you've got a lot of other stuff going on in life in general and certainly at the holiday time. So we want you to be really prepared so you can have some fun too. Excellent. That is such good advice. Be prepared so that you can have fun. Such a great sentiment. Uh, talking about sheets, there are some very strongly scented detergents. There are some very strongly scented laundry sheets and, and maybe softeners. I don't know what the deal is, but there's some people that I walk by at the gym and they smell like a walking dryer sheet. Oh, I've smelled that too. You I have to? I can't stand yeah. that. Yeah. And dryer sheets are verboten in my house. No more dryer sheets. I haven't used those in years and years and years and years and years. Oh, right. No, I, we, we never really did. I just, I never liked those things. So the, the problem is the smell is, is very strong. It's, and it, some people are very sensitive to it. It is highly toxic to your body. So I really don't recommend that you use any scented detergent or these dryer sheets or uh, softeners. Any of the stuff that's strongly scented is probably full of very toxic chemicals. 
So it's not really good for you to be around them. But if you want to wear that, if you want to wear clothing with that on there, well, you know, that's certainly your choice. But I would suggest that for your bedding, if you're having guests, that you use an unscented detergent on your sheets and bedding and not use dryer sheets when you're drying them. Just use a dryer balls like we recommend all the time. And then if you have a guest, they're going to have a much more pleasant experience. No one's going to say, where's that toxic smell I'm missing? Because yes. this does give people headaches. So I would just recommend, I mean, I would recommend you doing this on all, everything in your house. But if you're having guests, I highly recommend that you do that, at least on the stuff in that room. Unless you never want them to come back again. And then by all means, tuck in <laughs> some dryer sheets into their pillowcases. <laughs> A tip for a laundry detergent, a company called Aspen Clean, I believe they're out of Canada. They were recommended to me from the Environmental Working Group app, and I love their products. There's no scent. They really clean. And I get it a three-month supply sent to me. If you purchase over a certain amount of money, there's no shipping, and it just shows up at the door, and it's terrific. And it's paper packaging, it's no more plastic. So all good on that. I will link that in the show notes as well. And if I didn't mention that, I will also link the Stonewall Kitchen Onion Jam, and then you can explore all of Stonewall Kitchen if you don't know them. I think that um, I'm ready to open my house to some gas. So <laughs> anybody, anybody wants to show up, don't tell me because I want to show you how I <laughs> oh, am so ready. Me. Yeah, try to throw her off her game. Just show up. Just show up anytime. See if I am ready. I'm taking my own tips. Give me a couple of days though. I got to I gotta bake that raisin bread. <laughs> <laughs> no, you just buy it. Just oh, you just buy it. it. Okay, even yeah, better. Yeah, yeah. Well, what about, I mean, the worst thing is being at somebody's house. I shouldn't say the worst, but one of the worst things is being in the bathroom and you run out of toilet paper. So, I mean, this is another thing to think about is to have make sure you have extra toilet paper in the bathroom, tissues in there. And uh, I saw online somebody suggested having a toilet plunger in there. That sounds really scary. I'm going to edit that out. I don't even want to. Okay. Talk about okay. It. <laughs> toilet. I just, I'm shocked. Can what you believe going? I even said it? I know. I can't believe you strung those words together. Okay. Uh, so here's just a few more things before we move on to the DTT defines. What about a guest robe and the slippers in the closet of the guest room? Uh, that's really something that I love about a high-end hotel is that really nice robe that you can put on. And so that's a nice thing to have in there as well. And one last thing, And that is to have some fresh flowers in the room. I think that is just one of the most lovely touches you can have. Excellent. So what are we defining? Well, I thought today we would define muse. M-E-W-S. So it's a type of street. I know you know what a muse is. Mm, I covet a muse. (laughs) Yeah, me too. So these are typically traffic-free streets. Uh, Often these are found in London, but when I was looking at townhouses, I found some townhouses in Houston that were based on a London Muse model. So if you're in a city, you might find something like this, even if you're not in London. They're usually found behind a row of extravagant 18th and 19th century mansions. Muse streets are usually cobbled. They don't usually have sidewalks, and there's often no area for people to really plant anything. So you usually see when there are houses on these muse streets, there are a lot of planters and trees that are in in the big the big planters out there on the street. Uh, the muse became known as a muse after the Royal Muse, which was a gigantic stable built on what is now Trafalgar Square. So the King's Falcons were there. I don't know if you knew how they came up with the name muse, but the Falcons were housed there and they would molt or mew. And that is from the French word M-U-E-R, which means to molt. And that's how these became known as a muse. So the muse houses were originally intended to stable horses and accommodate these servants. They were typically built for these mansions for the Georgian and Victorian elites in the 18th and 19th centuries. And then at some point, people began to realize that these muse houses were very practical, charming, and located in very desirable areas areas. And now these are a hot, hot ticket. Yeah. And people want to live there because they're near all these great things, parks, shops, restaurants, schools, and they are really a hot 
property. Yeah, usually sort of a little bit of country within a really urban setting. You know, you come off the cobblestone street and then maybe you're on Kensington High Street or something like that. You're right there in the middle of it. We were going to rent an Airbnb muse in London when we were there a couple of summers ago. But they didn't have any air conditioning. Oh. And Peter wasn't too keen on that because we thought it was probably going to be super hot. So we ended up staying in a nice hotel. But, oh, gosh, it was so charming. Uh, talking about charming, my crush is a very, very charming house tour that was done by a House and Garden UK. It's actually a beach house in Massachusetts in America. And the designer couple one is British and one is American and they just did such a wonderful job redoing this little tiny cottage and I just love the smaller the better for me I just think it's so sweet and darling and they have so many collections particularly dishes so I know Anita and any of you other dish fanatics are going to absolutely love to see how they displayed all these things so I will link that in the show notes I think you'll enjoy it is that one that you sent me already I may have you sent me some oh it was beautiful I'm st- I saved some of the pictures. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some yeah. of them are so good. I screenshot them too. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, they're really beautiful. My crush, ever practical, I found a UV toothbrush sanitizer on Amazon. So it is supposed to uh, kill the bugs, kill your bacteria, and it has a 99.9% sterilization rate, and it uses the UV light technology. And it fits all toothbrushes, and it's just a little... Um, Maybe it's like three or four inches and it snaps over the brush part. It has rechargeable batteries and you just plug it in your USB to recharge them. But it lasts for a long time and uh, the sterilization only takes about three minutes. I mean, I don't know how effective it is, but I just feel better popping that on my toothbrush every night and I don't really worry about it. So it's like a little helmet for your toothbrush? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's like a little case. So, I mean, it might be nice if you're traveling because it would keep your toothbrush safe from, you know, touching other things. Oh, yeah. Oh, my daughter would love this. This could be a stocking stuffer right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, it's very nice. And again, you know, you just have to trust that it's really working. I mean, there's a blue light that comes on. Mm. So, I mean, but I, do I have the technology and the equipment? There's here a to certain test? amount of trust in life. You there just is, to. because I'm thinking, well, I'm trusting that it's killing the bacteria, but I don't know that that's happening. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, when when I travel, I just kind of wrap some like a Kleenex or TP around my toothbrush and chuck it in my bag. So this would be better. Well, <laughs> no, but it's not right. Well, I mean, it's not just for like protecting it while you're traveling, but you put it on right. every night to, to kill those. Well, I know or putting a Ziploc bag around it. So I'll include the link in the show notes and you can uh, have all that information because I know you don't care for uh, rogue bacteria either. <laughs> Dare I say who does? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, well, thanks so much for hanging out with us. And remember, we are here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. Want to talk to us? Well, we really want to talk to you. So let's schedule a design consult. And Nita and I are here to give you individualized, actionable advice on how to create the beautiful home you want and deserve. It's so easy to schedule a design consult with us. Simply click the link in the show notes or head to decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. When we talk to you on the scheduled time, we will be ready with so many great tips, advice, and yes, tricks. So sign up today for a design consult. We can't wait to talk to you.